just absolutely ignored Xavier Rhodes' side of the field and wouldn't go at him. Now they are finding him in coverage, and he is the most penalized Viking on defense. Um, He does give up plays underneath a lot, too. And so I think that for this defense to continue to really lead the way and and to be um, elite, he's got to find whatever he lost. And so uh, w- when you look at it, it's a defense that is so solid and you don't have any concerns at linebacker, not, none on the defensive line. Certainly uh, it, at safety, you're, you're, you're great. Um, I like what I'm seeing from Mackenzie Alexander, Trey Waynes, and Mike Hughes. But Xavier is one that they have to figure some things out to help get him back on track because it's a weakness right now that other teams are exploiting. Zimmer was really interesting talking about it after the game. He said, yeah. and he was kind of defending Rhodes, but he wasn't defending him in a defensive way. He was kind of explaining. He was saying, listen, Xavier Rhodes is a big, strong guy. He plays like a power forward. He has to play like a power forward, and he has to figure out a way to play like a power forward without drawing penalties. And he said, you know, he's it's his job to keep people from going deep on him. He's going to give up some hitches and some short stuff. But, you know, I guess left unsaid was, when you talk about him as a power forward, you're kind of admitting he's not very quick anymore. And that's, you know, that's, it's going to be difficult for him. I mean, he, he, McLaurin is a really nice young receiver. Yes. Runs, runs very good routes, very quick, uh, very good in and out of break. So it wasn't an easy matchup, but there were times Rhodes looked like he just was playing a different sport. Yeah. And, and the two things on that, Jim, um, cause I found those comments from Zimmer very interesting as well. One is, I don't know if you can be a power forward and play defensive back in the NFL these days, just with the way that they throw flags for every little bit of contact um, on a receiver. Uh, I, you know, I I know he has always had a physical nature to his game that really made him different and unique. And I think really endeared him to Mike Zimmer, but I wonder if that's even possible to play it that way anymore. And that's not even necessarily a fault of Xavier Rhodes, but just the way that they have changed the game in terms of how it's called. uh, I I think it's so hard these days to be the kind of in your face jam um, uh, punish type of defensive back that Xavier Rhodes has been for his entire career. And two, um, we have seen over and over again, over the course of Mike Zimmer's tenure here, that when a player struggles on the field for whatever reason, he is Zim does not hesitate to let him know it, let him have it a little bit publicly. Um, and, you know, Anthony Barr, even Eric Kendricks last week, who is playing great. You know, Zim was kind of like, well, he's got to do this better, he's got to do that better. Um, you know, the kickers, the quarterbacks, Case Keenum, like all of these guys who have come through here and struggled at times have often uh, been the target of a Zimmer of Zimmer's bluntness. And it's clear that he is not going down that road with Xavier Rhodes. And maybe that's because he knows Xavier would really not respond well to it. Maybe because he doesn't think that Xavier is struggling like it appears to be to the naked eye. Uh, I don't know what it is. I just found it really interesting that, uh, that he has not sort of brought out the pairing knife when he assesses Xavier Rhodes' game the way he has other players' games in the past. And it might be because Zimmer would rather blame officials who are calling it tight yeah. rather than call than blame the player who he thinks yep. he needs. You know, um, yeah. I have a yeah. couple, couple other notes on the defense I want to get to. I do want to thank Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D. You can find his site at champlininsurance.com or you can just Google Tony Hoagland. H-O-H-E-L-U-N-D has been handling my insurance and Michael Russo's insurance for a long time now. Hi, Talk North listeners. I wanted to let you all know about State Farm's new Quotes for Good program. We partner with local nonprofits to raise money for great causes. I'd like you to update you I will donate $10 to the Adam Thielen Foundation, benefiting the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. When you call in, be sure to mention the show so that we can track the donations. You can reach us at 763-421-4900. Or check out our website at champlininsurance.com. A couple other notes on the defense. Everson Griffin is having a very good year. Uh, he's put, for the time, he's put any worries about him by the wayside. I think Eric Kendricks is having probably the 
the most impressive, maybe the most overall impressive season of any Viking defender. And, uh, you know, and as you mentioned, the cornerback depth, especially now that Hughes is back, is pretty impressive. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're loaded on defense. There's no question. But I do think you, know, you hit a key point in that when Everson Griffin is more of the game changer uh, that he was before all of his issues last season, um, uh, it's a, it gives this, this defense a different element. I mean, Daniil Hunter is unbelievable, like phenomenal. Uh, just a monster terror in the run game, in the pass game, all of it. But it is even harder to neutralize him when he has someone complimenting him on the other side to wreak plenty of havoc as well. And, uh, you know, Everson certainly looked like he was in dire straits last year, both personally and professionally. When he came back, uh, he was not the same player that he was before all of that, understandably so. And, but whatever he has done um, to kind of put uh, address the demons that he was clearly facing and and really refocus, it has worked to this point. And who knows what it is? I'm certainly not going to speculate about um, you know what he's done in his personal life and is it, if everything is cool and kosher or not. I have no idea. But I do know that uh, he has shown more burst, more power more uh, game-changing ability this season that I was wondering if it was completely lost last year. And so it just brings an entirely different dimension. I agree with you on Kendricks as well. He's been absolutely terrific. He makes splash plays. He is, he has to be one of the best line middle linebackers in coverage in the league. Um, And, you know, yeah, like, uh, I think Trey Waynes has definitely made a step up. I I really like what I've seen from Mike Hughes. Uh, It coming back from the injury, it looks like he gets more and more comfortable week after week. So uh, from a talent standpoint and from a performance standpoint, uh, this defense really is rounded into form and it's pretty damn impressive. I want to talk offensive line, Stefan Diggs and the second half schedule. I do want to... uh, Offer one more note on Twill. This Saturday, that's October 26th, they are going to be uh, they're going to do their Fall Faraday Trunk Show. And if you show up, you get 20% off the entire Faraday Fall Collection. Whether it's Casual Night on Town or a Bonfire with Family and Friends, the Faraday Collection is the perfect brand for the season. Wendy Thurk from Faraday will be in the store to assist with your selections. And uh, I've been to their trunk shows, and they can they really are very helpful. And it's low, it's no pressure or low pressure. They just they just want to show you what they have. Let's check it out. Also, remember, we have a deal with Bite Squad. The promo code is Talk North to get your first delivery fee waived. But use that. Use them after that because they've been a great supporter of this network and because they do a really good job getting good food to you, uh, home or office, morning, noon, night, late night. And also go to BiteSquad.com, see what deal they deals they might have in your area, including their members-only deals. And uh, the best way to use them is to upload the uh, Bite Squad app and upload your information to it. makes ordering very easy. All right, offensive line. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think they are doing enough right now. Um, I you know, Kirk Cousins has had more time uh, during the, the, these pa- this past month uh, to to find guys down the field. Um, I, I don't think they're overpowering by any sense, stretch of the imagination, but it seems like a group that is just playing better collectively uh, than they were earlier in the season, and certainly uh, than they were last year I don't know that it's ever going to be a unit that you look at and say just dominate a game guys just go out there and absolutely control everything from the point of attack keep cousins clean open big holes for Dalvin and and let's impose our will I don't think that's what they are but it does seem like they are getting some cohesion. They're getting some things together. They're still getting too many penalties, though, Jim. I mean, Pat Elfline had a really tough night last night uh, with, with, with some penalties, and, and those could come back to haunt them if they don't address that in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, one thing that I was talking to uh, a scout about last night was, you know, when you look at penalties, a lot of times coaches frame it as a discipline problem, as, hey, we got to, we just got to, be more sound um a lot of times it's a talent problem it's a it's a group that you know is is playing against more talented players and so they have to overcompensate and maybe try and cheat a little bit and they and they get caught more so 
Um, when you see those penalty flags come like they did last night, I think it is a sign that they're not exactly uh, hitting on all cylinders. But I think it's been an improvement from where it was a month ago for sure. Absolutely. And I will also say when Josh Klein has been healthy, the line has been very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he makes it. Yeah, he makes a different. He makes a difference in like he is a veteran and and he, I think, provides some sort of uh, I don't know if it's a calming influence or if it's just like a, uh, a a rallying influence where he he's able to bring the guys together. Uh, but certainly a rookie center like Garrett Bradbury, having him on one side of him to to kind of help him through things, I think is 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 definitely a bonus. Um, so if he can stay healthy and stay in there. That, that will certainly be big for them down the stretch. Two more topics. Stefan Diggs. Uh, the, he, this is why you put up with his BS, right? Um, this is why the Vikings did not think about trading him. This is why they didn't suspend him for going AWOL. Um, they, he, last night, was one of the few guys who didn't look like he was playing on a Thursday. It looked like he was playing on a Sunday. He had plenty of juice in his legs. He made big plays, uh, and and they needed it because Adam Thielen was out, and and it was clear that Diggs really took it upon himself to be dynamic and and to really dominate. Uh, I I am concerned about the fumbles. There's, I mean, he he had no fumbles over his career going back to the first game of, of his career when he had two, he didn't have a single fumble and now he has four this year, lost three. He's also dropped a few more passes than he normally does. So that is something that he has to address and, 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 and fix. But from a pure talent standpoint, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And it goes, it goes back to the old adage that coaches will often say is that, different levels of talent get you different rules that you can play by. And it's clear that he plays by a different set of rules because he is so talented and the Vikings need him so much. Vikings are six and two. The second half schedule does not seem to be as daunting as we might've thought before the season started. What do you think the proper expectations of this team's are team is at this point? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I we still have to see them play against better competition and we're really going to see that in the next couple of weeks at Kansas city at Dallas. Um, at Seattle for a, a month from now, so it's a really a grueling stretch that they come into. That they're going to have to, they're going to have to play better. They're going to have to show that they can beat the big boys um, just as much as they can beat the struggling teams. But uh, I do think that they should enter this stretch believing that they have every chance to challenge Green Bay for the NFC North championship. Uh, I, I think that the way that the offense is playing, I think Kevin Stefanski and Kirk Cousins have found a rhythm. Uh, that that gives them a, a a great look, and it's not one dimensional. It's 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 multifaceted now, and and that's good. The defense is playing great and limiting teams to to nine nine points. It, it, like that that you can we can win a game every week when you do that. And so um, they should go in brimming with confidence. Um, and they sh- but they're you know, they have to be ready to start punching harder because. Uh, they're going to face a lot better competition here. And I really think over this next month is really going to tell the tale for them. They have to emerge from this next four game stretch with maybe, you know, I don't know, one or two losses at the most, because it, you know, the way that green Bay is playing right now, you might need to get to 12 wins to win the division. And I didn't think that that was going to be the case at the start of the season. And home field advantage isn't always the defining measure of the playoffs these days but more and more teams have shown the ability to go on the road and win in playoffs and big games but for this team i think the vikings are so much better at home that i think winning the division does carry a premium because it gets you at least a one home game yeah yeah they are they're they're a they're a different beast at home and you know you always you kind of always say that defense travels and so they should be good on the road but sometimes their defense hasn't traveled at least early in games and so uh, they are faster, more ferocious. Uh, um, at, you know when, when they're at home under the lights here, and so uh, I think that it is more important for them to be here than it might be for a few other teams that might be built to go out on the road and and win a couple of games in the playoffs. 
Thanks to our producer, Brandon Morton. Remember, follow us at Talk North Pod on Twitter, and we'll be back next week to uh, preview the Kansas City game and talk about whether Patrick Mahomes, son of a Twins pitcher I used to cover, is going to play against the Vikings.